Hey guys, it's the Junior Coder, and this is part 8 of the Intro to Python tutorial series. So let's get right into it. In this section, I'm going to show you how to work with directories in Python. So here, on Python 3 module index, we can see we have a module called pathlib, which provides us an object-oriented file system paths. That basically means it makes it easier for us to work with directories and files. So, if you click here, you can see how this module works. You can see a lot of examples. For example, here on the basic use, you can see this is how we can import the path class from the pathlib module. So, take a look. From pathlib, import path. Note the naming convention. P is capitalized, that means it's a class. But now, let me quickly show you a few examples to help you get started. So, back in PyCharm, on the top, we write from pathlib import the path class now we need to create a path object so there are basically two ways to do this we can use an absolute path or we can use a relative path which basically means a path that is starting from the current directory for example if you want to reference this time directory in our project we can use the relative path so we start from the current directory and then we go somewhere else but absolute paths are different for Mac and Windows for example, on Windows, you can have an absolute path like C drive backslash program files backslash PyCharm. So these are directories in C drive. On Windows, we use a backslash to build a path. If you're on Mac, your paths will look a little bit different. So instead of a backslash, we have a forward slash. Let's say user slash local slash bin. So these are examples of absolute paths. In this section, we're going to work with the relative path to work with this time directory that we have in our project. Now if you didn't create this directory earlier, simply right click on our project and go to new directory. Okay, so we create a path object. Now if you don't pass an argument here, this will reference the current directory. So for now, let's add a string and in this string, let's add a file or a directory. Let's say the time directory. Now this creates a path object, so let's store it here now this path object has a few interesting methods. For example, we can check to see if a path exists. This simply returns a boolean, so let's print that on the terminal. There you go, so this path exists. But if we change this to, let's say, time1 and run our program, you get false. We can also create a new directory. For example, let's change this path to weathers. Now when we run this program, obviously we get false because this path does not exist but we can create it by using the mkdir method and that is short for make directory let's run our program so this method returns none which basically means it does not return any value now if you look at the project panel you can see that here we have a new directory called weathers we can also delete this directory so instead of mkdir we call rmdir which is short for remove directory let's go ahead now you can see that directory is gone. We can also find all the files and directories in a given path. So first we change the path to the current directory and then we call the glob method so GLOB. With this method we can search for all the files and directories in this path. So as the first argument we need to pass a string that defines the search pattern. We can type a star and that means all files and directories in the path. We can also optionally add an extension. So to get all of the files, we write star dot star. With this pattern, we'll only get the files in the current directory, not the directories. We can also search for all the Python files, so dot pi, or all the Excel spreadsheets, anything. So let's search for all the pi files in the current directory. Now, when we run our program, we get this generator object. Generator objects are kind of an advanced topic, so we're not going to be taking a look at them in this series. But for now, all you need to know is that we can loop through this generator object. So, instead of printing this generator object, let's just iterate over it using a for loop. So, for file in the generator object, let's print file. That's it. So, when you run our program, there you go. So, these are all the pi files in my current directory. This result could be different when you run it based on what pi files you have in this directory. 
So don't worry if the files you see here are different when you run it. So we can use the glob method to search for files using a pattern. We can also get all of the files and directories in a given path. So we only use one star. So take a look. So we have this time directory. We have notes.txt. This is a file I created earlier just to write notes as part of the exercises. So you're not going to have this file. We also have a bunch of other files and directories. Even though the Python standard library has so many modules for working for different things, it's not really complete. That's why we have this directory called Python Package Index or PyPI. And in this directory, you can find thousands of packages for doing awesome things. So let's say you want to send text messages in your program. You don't have to build all the functionalities from start. You can simply come to pypi.org and search for SMS. As you can see, there are so many packages that give you this functionality. Of course, not every package is complete. Some of them are still in development. But if you look around, I'm pretty sure you can find what you're looking for. So that'll be it for part 8. If you learned something, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. In part 9 and 10, we'll create two awesome projects to end this series. So make sure to keep an eye out for those. I'll see you next time. Bye!